on satellite, on freeview, on cable, on radio, on mobile, on the web and around the world. This is First at Nine on Other Varana 24-7. from home and across the world. This is First at Nine, another there in a 24-7. Good evening, I'm Katharina Chang. Now, the most awaited budget 2018 was presented by Finance Minister Mangala Samravira in Parliament today. He titled his maiden budget a blue-green budget which will tackle the environmental aspects. Despite it was expected to be more concession based with local government elections on the horizon, the budget focused on untouched areas. The budget 2018 was focused on promoting SME sector and giving certain concessions for local industrialists. Mr. Speaker, while commending our private sector for pe penetrating into the international arena, much more needs to be done. We have tried many strategies, including protecting local industries through tariffs. We have legislations that do not allow foreign investments in certain sect sectors. Perhaps most of all, our complex labor laws and bureaucracy have unwittingly obstructed foreign enterprises from entering into the country, thereby preventing the much-needed competition for the local industries. Trade reforms are integral to national competitiveness. Let me assure our local private sector, our government's policy of entering into the free trade agreements and the removal of para-tariffs should not be viewed as a threat to our local industries. Finance Minister also proposed a new support scheme for the export market. We will introduce an export market access support program as part of the trade adjustment program which will support our local companies that already have exports of less than US dollars 10 million per annum and potential new entrants to the export market. This program will facilitate to meet the cost of compliance which include the cost of provision of free samples, intellectual property registration, insurance and promotional costs uh, undertaken overseas to support in meeting the cost of rent of retail shop space or sh shelf space occupied by domestic brands that go overseas for a period of 36 months. Meanwhile, bringing the tourism industry to the next level was also a focus area in the budget reading today. The tourism industry remains a vibrant industry. Tourism arrivals are estimated to increase by almost threefold to 4.5 million by 2020. Our support to the industry is as follows. The increase in tourist warrants extra rooms apart from the hotel rooms that are already been constructed. In this context, mechanisms such as the homestay program will be encouraged and the government through the, the new credit scheme will offer credit facilities to people who want to upgrade their homes in order to establish a level playing field for tourist service providers in both formal and informal sectors. It is suggested to register all tourist service provide providers with the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Agency. Some strategies was focused to attract foreign direct investments. For a middle income country, we have not been able to attract FDIs on the same scale as our neighbours. Our processes must be relooked at and benchmark against the best. It is in this context that I wish to propose the following. The Department of, of the Registrar of Companies, as part of its business re-engineering process, will establish a one-stop shop for business registration through the introduction of a single identification system and introduce a system to scan and digitalize company records, create a database of trademarks using its own funds. We will also introduce an e local government application, automated construction permit issuing mechanism, integrated land registry, digitalized 45 land registers, and establish a national single window connecting 31 state urgent agencies with the customs department, and I have allocated 500 million for this purpose. Developing an untapped capital market was also one of his proposals. Our capital markets remain largely untapped. As such, we will ensure the necessary legal framework and the policy environments are created for its further development. In this regard, we will divest our holdings in non-strategic enterprises, which I believe will create buoyancy in our stock markets. Our capital market strategy is propelled by a desire to ensure access to long-term funding at a lower cost. 
the government allocated 1 billion rupees to develop small industries in the northern province. The government will continue their efforts with greater vigour and commitment to bring the people of all communities to our, of our country together. On an initiative of the President, the 50,000 brick and mortar type houses will be constructed in the north and the east. This is in addition to the allocations already provided to other ministries, 750 million. The government will support programmes and activities in rural irrigation development development, including drip irrigation, rainwater harvesting and integrated village development. We have allocated two billion for that. We are now at the crossroads of history. Are we to walk forward, united in our diversity, to a new age of freedom and prosperity? Or are we to go back to the darkness of a bygone era? The choice is ours to make. Thank you very much. Thank you. The budget today proposed all vehicles in the country to be powered by non-fossil fuel sources by 2040. All government vehicles will be converted to hybrid or electric vehicles by 2025. Import taxes on an electric car will be reduced by 1 million rupees, while the import tax on the high-end fossil fuel cars will be increased by 2.5 million rupees. The import taxes on a diesel three-wheeler will be increased by 50,000 rupees in order to encourage the transition into environmentally friendly electric three-wheelers. The loan-to-value ratio for the electric buses and three-wheelers will be revised to 90-10. This will be extended for domestically assembled electric three-wheelers, cars and buses as well. Importation of motor vehicles which are not compiled with airbags will be prohibited with effect from the 1st of January 2018. The budget proposed to introduce a carbon tax where the applicable rates for a motorcycle, car and a passenger bus will be around 17 cents, 1.78 rupees and 2.47 rupees per day respectively. To discourage the use of polythene and plastic products, an excise duty of 10 rupees per kilogram for plastic resins were imposed. A 2 rupee daily tax was introduced on mobile towers. Three state medical faculties to be built at Wayamba, Sabaragamo and Moratua universities with the objective of expanding medical education. An alcohol volume based excise duty depending on the type of liquor to be introduced. Excise duty based on the quantum of sugar contained will be introduced for the beverages with added sugar. This duty applicable for beverages classified under HS code 22.02. 300 million rupees has been allocated for a weather index insurance scheme. The insurance will be a minimum of rupees 40,000 per acre for six crops, including paddy and other five emerging crops. 750 million has been allocated to strengthen eight credit schemes on low interest rates to support SMEs and micro level entrepreneurs. In the meantime, parliamentarians of the ruling party and the opposition expressed their views following the budget presentation. The Magi Kali Toada, Biliana, Mangan Hasi, the other of the Wither, that is the other Yana coming negative radical Latino, again the Hata Kadula, Kuda Gaga. Actually, the budget presentation was a very development-oriented budget because we have given a lot of welfare measures. The welfare measures were already given yesterday, so we have not kept it as a popularistic budget, but it's a very development budget, and the government has allocated a lot of money even for health. They have allocated a lot of money for infrastructure. They have allocated for three more medical faculties, one in Vayamba, one in Sabargamua, and one in uh, Morotua. We are extremely happy about the budget proposal that was forwarded. It shows that not only has Finance Minister thought about the economy of the country, but also on all the environmental issues. He has pretty much also to benefit the small industries for entrepreneurs to come up. So actually we are very, very happy with the... This uh, budget has been termed as a, a green budget focusing on uh, environmental protection and to prevent uh, natural disasters. Variety of different interventions have been made. Investments are being made to improve infrastructure in different parts of the country, targeting different sections of the people. The finance Minister has uh, generously allocated uh, funds out of the consolidated fund directly to improve the housing uh, uh, program for the urban poor. In a situation where we are faced with a heavy debt burden, for the Finance Minister to come up with a budget which doesn't uh, increase the burdens on the people but to uh, improve their livelihoods. Um, and to um, give incentives to exports and other income is a welcome uh, feature of this budget. Uh, it's a difficult situation for any, any finance minister to prepare a budget at this stage, uh, especially uh, 
the trade deficit over 8 billion uh, US dollars. Finding that amount is a very difficult task. To do that, of course, we you need to improve exports and uh, 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 introduce substitution for in, uh, imports. This year, I think we have to repay around uh, 1.9 trillion, and our income would be around 2.2 trillion. And in addition to that, uh, they have earmarked and explained the areas where they are going to provide new investment and uh, new opportunities will be available for many. But uh, we will have to wait and see how practically it will happen. I have a question for the foreign debt repayment. I have a question for the foreign debt repayment. That is going to cause some discomfort to the people. But apart from that, this is a budget that, has, that seems to have been well thought out and from the perspective of reconciliation and from the north, the work programs that have been suggested are good. So it's designed really well. It's based on the Vision 2025 launched about two months ago. Uh, this budget provides an implementation plan. 200% uh, capital allowance is allowed. So these are unprecedented uh, with the objective of creating a knowledge-based, highly competitive social market economy. It's a brilliant budget. Earlier this morning, other than a 24 7 launched a bilingual live discussion on the day's hot topic, the budget. Prior to the budget speech, State Minister of International Trade, Sujiva Sena Singha, spoke on developments in international trade, where he was asked as to what is the best way to exploit trade agreements through domestic production. Something that uh, uh, many have raised uh, about is the conducive environment for foreign direct investments that's, to come into correct. the country. But uh, how far has the government been successful in this regard? And what measures do you think still remains? Because that environment... You're, you're, you're spot on on that. Uh, we, were, we were actually lagging behind mm -hmm. for a long time. Uh, the BOI we are restructuring according to Harvard and a couple of professors are working on that. Mm -hmm. So if you if an investor comes, we have uh, ready-made information from these uh, groups. And not only that, uh, especially the uh, East out Dream business ranking in Sri Lanka, we, we have uh, slipped down to 110 from 85. Because we were trying to put the system right, it has gone back. But now we have identified 15 major changes that, uh, especially uh, legal, legal. Okay. So uh, we have 10 task force working on that. The dialogue continued even after the presentation of the budget. The mentally, do you think that we have set a policy path to, through this budget? We are trying to create a semi credit guarantee fund and more allocation for healthcare, education, uh, divesting of non-state strategic assets. I don't know how practical it is. But I quote the finance minister saying, um, uh, 7,000 billion rupees we have to pay back as loans. Mm. That is 1,970 billion rupees will be needed to pay back loans in 2018, yes. next year. So we need to we need relief to pay off these loans, and we are not ready to make the public pay for this. Therefore, every bank transaction of one thousand rupees will have a tax of zero point two zero rupees as a loan repayment tax for the next three years. It's a huge. What it is, is the impact of this? It's a huge tax on the banks, a cost of the banking system, hmm. with uh, Basel three coming in. So their profitability is going to get hit. I don't know how the bankers' association are going to react to this. Well, to be fair, by the <laughs> <laughs> finance minister, <laughs> who, <laughs> who, <laughs> whom he is going to tax? You know, is it the people? Well, now they can't touch it now. There are elections around the corner. Then production sectors. Then that means that you are going to hit the growth. Mm -hmm. So banks are lying in between. So perhaps you know that's a, a easy way out for the uh, the government. To I, mean, I think we, we, we won't know the full impact of mm. it till till we kind of see it o in operation. Mm. But given that we've had a steady decline in the tax to uh, sort of tax revenue to GDP ratio in <coughs> Sri Lanka, and, and we need to raise it dramatically in a short window. And even though we are called the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, and USA mm. is the you know heartland of capitalism. So, so it, it's a, it's we have a problem in our income tax system that's very deep, and they did announce you know various changes to the. Meanwhile, following the budget presentation, first at nine spoke with several economists and analysts to get their thoughts on the presented budget. When taxes are made more progressive, on one hand it is fair and it is ethical to do so. On the other hand, it would hopefully reduce the mix of government income from depending on indirect 
and depending less on direct. So if the mix changes, hopefully it will set the stage for some sort of easing. It's a budget at reigniting the economy and also creating an enabling environment for business with a number of measures targeted to improve exports and to create a green environment. With the SME sector is of great interest. Now within that SME sector, we are yet to see clear direction as to how the government is going to ensure that the financial sector which accounts for more than 32% uh, of the labor force is going to benefit from the budget because the government has mentioned that they want to develop enterprises and entrepreneurship within that span. As a show of protest against the ongoing fuel crisis, a group of parliamentarians from the joint opposition, including former President Mahindra Raj Paksha, arrived in parliament on bicycles and bullock carts. <laughs> A group of joint opposition MPs who attempted to enter the parliament on bicycles and bullock carts from the parliament roundabout were prevented from entering the parliament complex by police. Parliamentarians representing the joint opposition, Dinesh Gunavardhana, Mahinda Yapa and Pial Nishanta's choice of transport was the bullock cart. The parliamentary MPs have a privilege that they shall not be interrupted or disturbed. Coming to parliament and returning after parliament to their respective residences. That is, in the standing orders and in the as, as a privilege of members of parliament. Today, our joint opposition MPs, headed by Home President Mahindra Rajapaksa, we cycle to parliament because there is a petrol... Yeah, let him speak, please. Let him speak. Because... Yeah. Hurry, hurry. May yeah. I... Uh, may... May I hunger the Honda to some may I hunger the dragon? You are thinking, yes, I'll give my ratama, Mulu ratama petrol and to India. Honorable Speaker, they may all shout, but the entire country does not have petrol. As MPs, they did not allow us to enter the parliament. The police cannot stop us entering the parliament in this manner. Honorable Speaker, yeah. uh, Honorable Dinesh Kunwada made a complaint yeah. about violation of standing orders. Yeah. I think you can inquire into it. Because I, if the opposition was protesting against the imposition of a luxury tax on vehicles. Yeah, and yeah. if you want to find out what happened, you look into it. Yeah. <laughs> you are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Dharana 24-7. As the country marks the seventh day of the fuel crisis, the much-expected fuel tanker Neveska Lady, carrying 40,000 metric tons of fuel, docked at the Muturaj Vela terminal today. Pumping of fuel to the storage facility in Muturaj Vela was commenced following quality testing. The CPC added that from tonight, distribution of fuel could be carried out as normal. The fuel tanker Lady Neveska, which embarked on its journey from the United Arab Emirates, approached the Muturajwila terminal at around 11.45 last night. The CPC stated that the ship carries 32,500 metric tons of octane 92 petrol, along with 7,500 metric tons of octane 95. The consignment of fuel carried by the tanker was subjected to quality testing by officials of the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation early this morning. With tests confirming that the consignment is up to standard, the fuel was pumped to the Muturajwala storage facility. The first bowser of fuel departed for distribution at 7.30 this evening from the Muturajwala storage facility. Meanwhile, Indian media report that following a request made by President Maithripala Sirisena to Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, a 21 million litre shipment of fuel was dispatched from Odisha yesterday. Long queues, however, were seen at fuel stations across the island for a seventh day today as well. The 
so uh, we have stock of about 40000 in this particular ship and there will be another ship uh, carrying 40000 metric tons of gasoline uh, will arrive on the 13th and 14th from singapore uh, and another one on 23rd and 24th of uh, this month so we will be having ample stocks uh, so there's no need to worry Minister of Ports and Shipping Mahinda Samrasinghe today revealed that Sri Lanka stands to receive more than the stipulated 10% of the lease agreement pertaining to the Hampanduta port by December. Speaking at media briefing of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party today, the minister said that China merchant port holdings agreed to pay 30% of the lease by December, following a request made by the government. While saying the full lease of $1.12 billion will be received within six months, the minister said the government hopes to declare 8th of December as the operational date of the Hambantha report. Minister Samarit Singh also touched on some other topics, including the constitutional process. Recent statements of the Chief Minister of Northern Province indicates the existence of extremists inside the Tamil National Alliance. TNA has a leader who is prepared to arrive at common ground. They have mentioned in public that they do not want the country divided. Their leadership has to show results to their people after working with us and that is not against the constitution. All of it is done within the framework of the constitution and a unitary state. Some argue that an executive prime minister should be included in the constitution and vest all the presidential powers on him. It is not a solution for the SLFP as the executive president is chosen by the public. If we give those powers to a Prime Minister, how can we tell the public that this Prime Minister will constantly be dedicated for the public? The Executive Prime Minister is dependent on a majority and the majority could change. The Minister also spoke as to why the interim report of the Steering Committee of the Constitutional Assembly wreaked much havoc in the country. How much did the country panic due to an unclaimed interim report? I blame the government. The country should be told that it only contained the ideas of all. When Minister Kabir Hashim proposed to close down Mihiner during the last cabinet meeting, the entire cabinet applauded and told the president to appoint another presidential commission to investigate the Sri Lankan Airlines Mihiner deal. Such trust is now established. The president said he will appoint a commission if we want one. Sri Lanka shares were lower after the close today as losses in the plantations, palm oil and beverages and tobacco sectors led shares lower. At the close in Colombo, the CSE all share fell 0.47%. We now have the daily market update with Imesh Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange. Top 5 gainers of the day were Central Investments and Finance, Blue Diamonds, Nation Lanka Finance, Asia Asset Finance and HVA Foods. While the top five losers were Madhusima Plantations, Blue Diamonds Non Voting, Adam Investments, Udupu Cell Lava Plantations, and Balangwada Plantations. Premier News Channel, other than a 24-7. Welcome back to the news. U.S. President Donald Trump, whose first official visit to China is underway as a part of his five-nation tour in Asia, says that he does not blame China for taking advantage of U.S. over trade differences. 
The president made the comments during an, ad during ad an address to U.S. and Chinese business leaders amid wide-ranging discussions with his Chinese counterpart, President Xi Jinping, today. I don't blame China. After all, who can blame a country for being able to take advantage of another country for the benefit of its citizens? I give China great credit. Meanwhile, Trump also met Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing today for bilateral discussions pertaining to tensions in the Korean Peninsula. Trump, who warned of the grave danger of developing nuclear weapons, stated that he believed that a solution can be found on the North Korean nuclear issue. Let's now take a look at some other stories making news across the world. Cuba's Foreign Ministry Chief for U.S. Affairs yesterday stated new U.S. government regulations to make it tougher for Americans to visit Cuba would hurt the Cuban people and U.S. businesses. According to the White House, the restrictions are aimed at preventing the military, intelligence and security arms of Cuba's communist government from benefiting from American tourists and trade. Colombia's police yesterday seized over 11 metric tons of cocaine from Colombia's top crime gang, marking the biggest hole in the nation's long-running fight against drug trafficking. The seized quantity of cocaine, which amounts to nearly $360 million, was found stored underground on four farms in a banana-growing region near Colombia's border with Panama. British Prime Minister Theresa May yesterday gained a wax doppelganger at the Waxworks Museum, Madame Tussauds, in London. The statue of the British Prime Minister will reside at the museum in close proximity to the likenesses of other world leaders, including US President Donald Trump and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. You are watching Sri Lanka's trusted news brand, Other Verana 24-7. Coach of the Bangladesh cricket team, Chandikhatur Singh, has submitted his resignation today. Reports claim that there are strong signals from Sri Lanka cricket on pursuing Hathur Singh and are in fact presently in negotiations with him. However, Hathur Singh and officials are yet to comment on these developments. Denis Shapovalov secured his first win at the next-gen ATP final in Milan by beating Italian wildcard Gianluigi Quenzi yesterday. The Canadian claimed his victory with a sole line of 4-1, 4-1, 3-4 and 4-3 and will need to beat Russia's Andrei Rublev to reach the semi-finals. The eight-man tournament showcasing the players who are tipped to be the future of men's tennis is using radical new rules aimed at increasing the popularity of the sport. Shapovalov raced through the opening two sets against his fellow former junior Wimbledon champion before the match burst into life when the Italian found another gear. Despite double faulting on match point, Shapovalov claimed victory. With sets being played only to four games, there are no advantage points, shot clocks to enforce the 25 second between points rule, no let serves and coaching via headphones at the end of sets. The new rules also exclude line judges for the tournament with Hawk Eye technology calling lines using an automated voice. You are watching Sri Lanka's award winning news channel, Other Verena 24 7. Let's now cross over to Southern Upeka at the other Darana Weather Centre with your forecast for the next 24 hours. Good evening and welcome to the Weather Centre. Now tomorrow's temperatures will average at around 26 degrees Celsius in coastal areas, hitting a high of 28 degrees in some places in the west. Cool temperatures in the low 20s will prevail in the central hills. Now a low pressure zone will form across most parts of the island during the latter half of the day, bringing widespread showers or thunder showers, especially in the northeast. That's it from the weather center tonight. Up next is your city by city forecast. And before we go, we'd like to take you to Wilpatu National Park, the largest and one of the oldest national parks in Sri Lanka. Wilpatu is home to diverse species and flora and fauna, including birds, crocodiles, deer, elephants and especially leopards. 
Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening. information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Varana, 24-7.